Now, when you were five years old, mm -hmm. um, your mother decided to return to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that? Um, uh, well, my, my grandparents actually are the ones that encouraged her to go because they felt that um, she might uh, make a better um, life in Hawaii and uh, she might be able to um, uh, uh, for her children, us, that better education in Hawaii. Because, uh, you know, to remarry in, in Japan, Japanese custom was very rare at that time. So um, they, they said, okay, you have your, you know, siblings in Hawaii, your family there. So try go to Hawaii, and if it's if it's not what you want, then you know you can always come back. But uh, so she wasn't, but she didn't want it to go by herself. So she took uh, my sister, but my sister actually was too young to for U.S. to permit. But um, she had uh, her, uh, she said her birth certificate had to be altered that she was born a little earlier. So. Um, then she came on U.S. passport with my mother. So I was definitely from beginning, no. So if you all, she altered her, the year that she was born, how was she able, uh, can you explain that a little bit of how she was able yeah, to Yeah, she come said, uh, well, you go to Yakuba, and Yakuba, they will, you know, when, when, you, when you're born, you report to uh, Yakuba, and you put your uh, name and birth date in their document. Of course, that's all handwritten, so I think that's how the, because she was born in 19, June of 1941, and uh, they said you had to be born, uh, so she had to alter six months earlier, so like uh, end of 40 or something to do with the uh, war. Bombing was done in what, 41? Was it Pearl Harbor? It was December, right? So you could not be in that year. It was, it was I, I don't remember, but it was something that you have to be a year before, something like that. And, um, and so she, she, she had to alter, and then uh, she, she came on her. My mother had U.S. passport, so she came on her uh, passport to get. But again, my, I have a friend who was born in Okinawa, and she and her sister both were born in Okinawa, but uh, her both parents were U.S. citizens. But they were like, you know, first ship that came out, and the whole family came, and she, she had, they had no problem. But I think her father was had somehow with the U.S. Um, government connection. But they were also in those, um, um, repatriation um, act or whatever that uh, U.S. Uh, granted the people with U.S. citizen the right to return to America. And so my mother was born, so she was one of those. And there were, there were some of her, um, few of her uh, high school classmates that they were born in America, and they were all like sent to uh, Okinawa to go to school. They came, and I believe there were three or four ships, and my mother was second from the last ship, so I don't know if that's second or third ship that she came. And but they were most they were all to Hawaii, but except for one, um, yeah, some. People came to uh, San Francisco, from Hawaii to San Francisco, but I don't know how that ship worked. But they were, yeah, th that's how um, my mother and my sister came to Hawaii. And um, they lived in Kauai with the grandparents a little. And then uh, my mother went to Honolulu to work. So only not knowing the language, only job she could get was uh, work as a maid, housework. So, yeah. Well, how, how did you feel about being left behind in Okinawa? Um, 
I don't think I knew, um, didn't, you know, feel any lonely because um, um, I know they were gone, but, you know, it, I was with my grandparents, so I probably was more spoiled than the <laughs> being <laughs> missing. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, you know, there's a PTA when the parents, uh, mother, you know, young mother comes, and I thought, oh, why do I have to be like old grandmother or something? <laughs> That's the kind of feeling. But the, other than that, I didn't really feel anything. Um, you know, they would get me a lot of um, magazines and uh, things like that. And then my, my grandfather was um, uh, able to read uh, English. So he would translate a lot of um, uh, those golden books that we had, um, Cinderella and those. So she, he would tell me all, the, read me all these uh, books, you know, tell me, tell the stories in Japanese. So, and uh, so a lot of, um, I think a lot of those magazines might have been things that we picked up in the U.S. dumps. <laughs> Because we did have like National Geographics and um, those um, um, children's books, U.S. books, and yeah, whatever um, books that we can find, you know. And of course, when after I mean, when we're going to school, a lot of uh, Japanese uh, children's magazines were out. You know, they would buy me those things and that that kept me quite and then living in village with all your classmates all neighborhood the children are constantly playing with each other so nothing that thought of being lonely yeah. I, I wanted to ask a little bit uh, about your village about uh, were there live bombs on the beaches near your area yes the beach, when we were going elementary school, the beach was just covered with uh, rusted bomb remains. And so we were all prohibited to go to the beach on our, uh, by ourselves because, you know, you, you have to kind of step in white sand in between those uh, bombs. But, um, of course, there's people that made big money picking those uh, scraps. And uh, after probably, um, yeah, uh, four, within uh, three, four, five years, the beach was just totally cleaned. But um, when I was uh, second, third, we, uh, I've lost two of my classmates from those light bombs, boys. I mean, they were always getting into mischievous, and they kind of played around, and they were both blown up. So those are the now, you were just a child, but uh, did you hear of people getting raped or committing suicide after the war? Um, rape, I've heard, uh, because, you know, I tried to <laughs> listen to what, like, I, could, I couldn't put together, but then, you know, I kind of knew it was something bad. Uh, my grandparents, grandmother, them talking about um, um, some mother and child being attacked and uh, suicide I've um, known this uh, this man now I think of it he might have been yeah some guilty guilt he might have been carrying but uh, he came back from the war and uh, um, I don't remember uh, being really you know injured, but I know he was going through uh, depression. He used to drink a lot, and um, he, so he, he committed suicide, rolling himself off the uh, cliff, and those things, yeah, I've heard. And, um, and like, um, you know, some neighbor, um, daughter, like being, um, either was sent to work in bar or prostitution, I don't know, but you know, a lot of, they had so that they can support the family. Those I've 
heard of. Can you, can you share a little bit about this military town called, is it Koza? Koza. Koza. Yeah. It was uh, called Koza, but now they, because of the that military town image that we made. So after the reversion uh, to Japan, that town changed to Naha City. Uh, no, uh, Okinawa City, Okinawa City. But Koza Town is uh, very close to, um, you know, base. Uh, Futenma base is also, was also closed. But it was, so Koza Town was really known as, uh, um, um, uh, you know, had a military bar area, a lot of uh, bars. But uh, I've never, uh, you know, of course, as a kid, that we weren't, told to go there at all, but the, um, I, from my understanding is, you know, half of the, the there's a main um, center of the street. They call it Jujiro. I guess it was nicely crossed like this, uh, Koza, Koza Jujiro. Um, and one side I heard was a, 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 a bars geared mostly to blacks. Another side was white. So they had a segregation among military within the, in the base. And I don't know how they behaved in the, their base, but uh, off base, that's what, that's what I heard. <laughs> so, yeah. Now the, that image is all gone, but that uh, Naha City is known as um, a music town. So they have a lot of um, uh, theaters, uh, small theaters where they have um, live uh, uh, hip hops, uh, uh, rock band and in, in that uh, town. So it's more geared to um, uh, young people of military and uh, Okinawans and uh, from Japanese uh, tourists. So it's it become very, very famous as far as that. But you mentioned, you, did you remember girls from Koza coming visiting? Yeah, the that time was, um, it was, of course, shortly after the, my, uh, I guess my grandmother knew uh, the family, um, the lady um, who so-called like running a brothel, but she was, um, she was more or less helping the girls type of thing. So it was, uh, I didn't know that at all, but uh, from what, you know, I can uh, imagine from that time and them talking. But one time, she, Koza is, uh, you have to go on bus from Chinen. It's a far distance. It's more middle part of the uh, Okinawa um, uh, island. And they came to our village and like a picnic. So the lady was uh, telling uh, my uh, grandmother, you know, I'm bringing them so that they can um, emotionally and just physically rest and enjoy, you know, their day. So that's, uh, um, and then, you know, sort of the way they talk about what, uh, what they, um, uh, what this person was like, this man was like. So, you know, from there I kind of, you know, um, get the uh, idea, oh, must be, you know, this. But, you know, of course now, you know, those things doesn't exist. Um, but uh, I assume a lot of them had that to, you know, especially to support their family, to uh, feed them. Now, when your uh, mother went to Hawaii, and also you had relatives in Hawaii, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, care packages did they send to Okinawa? Oh, a lot of hand-me-downs and uh, candies, um, uh, and um, uh, I guess canned goods, too, they've sent. But um, yeah, all the clothing uh, we, g we get, uh, this is from my uh, relatives. Um, my grandmother would already separate this one should go to so and so this one should go to so and so and you know whatever I can wear she would keep uh, you know so I can wear and again the candies too she would uh, open a package and all separate 
and so you know this is gonna go to that and every time um, somebody would come that, and eventually you know we would be eating it was the sis, uh, not sis, uh, kisses kisses chocolate were the uh, most uh, chocolate that they had said and it was much you know easier to uh, eat but you know we save it so preciously sometimes it gets molded and we still ate molded to chocolate, <laughs> mold and all. But um, so um, a couple of years ago, when I went to Okinawa, um, my classmates all said that they remember my grandmother because they all got candy from her. So you know, every time they pass by or they stop by, that they would get candies, which you know, at that time was non-existence at that time, yeah. Your grandmother was very generous. <laughs> um, now she also got you started in uh, dancing. Um, yes. Because, because she thought you might be lonely? She, she well, uh, um, my grandparents' intention was to keep me busy so that I don't get lonely, and um, um, I guess I, I like the music and dance because my friend's father, who lived um, uh, next door, neighbor, I would every time he's playing, I would be hanging around their hedge and just listen to him and play um, uh, as long, uh, quite a long time, so. And, and they taught, maybe, you know, they'll start me in dancing. But of course, there was no um, so-called teacher in our village. But there was this uh, young uh, lady um, who had experience in dancing. And they brought her and got me started at our house. And um, um, she was, uh, yeah, she had a a casualty from the war. She had no nose, so she always wore, you know, bandages around. And um, my um, my mother, I think my grandmother, probably um, requested some bandage from uh, Hawaii. So I remember, you know, when she get got it, she would be taken to her, or she would uh, get it from some friends that know, would take to her so she can um, change as often as possible. But, uh, and then uh, shortly after, there was next, uh, uh, our uh, village, uh, Soncho's uh, wife was uh, apparently working in the um, Ryote or had a little bit more formal uh, dancing uh, experience. So I started uh, learning from her. But of course, um, you know, only opportunity we would get to dance was uh, like a party. So they would have a opo, they would make a, a stage, the vi each village would make a stage and they would have a full program during the obon or something like that. So I would get to dance. But you know, the, the costume and things that we would have is, uh, scrap from my U.S. military parachute or like uh, gloves converted to um, tabi and kimono was uh, maybe somebody's uh, kimono taken uh, apart to make you know children's kimono so and fan was uh, made from um, Christmas wrapping paper that we would find in the dump. And, you know, bamboo we had not, so somebody would use bamboo screw and um, they would uh, glue um, fans. Yeah. I wish I kept those, but probably, you know, with the uh, nori as the uh, actual nori that I think all the mouse and uh, everything probably was all eaten, moth, everything eaten up. <laughs> Share with us, uh, well, number one, what, what is the sanshin and how were people making sanshin after the war? Uh, sanshin, actual sanshin is made out of snake skin. 
And uh, after the war, um, uh, you know, some of the uh, men that was uh, taken as a uh, um, refugee area or some village, they would, they would make um, sanshin with the, uh, either a uh, wooden uh, piece, piece of wood with a can, tin can, um, like an almond roca size uh, can, and um, just uh, uh, use um, fishing um, uh, string rods and uh, bamboo, and very creative, and actually makes the made the sound. And if you know how to play, and if, you know, right now, you know, for nostalgic uh, purpose, they do have that at uh, souvenir stores. Now it's nicely colored, you know, pink or yellow, but those were very uh, uh, unique, and I think that. Um, gave everybody joy and solace to after the war. <laughs> what did you folks refer to this type of sanshin? Karakara, uh, karakara sanshin. You know, karakara as uh, the tin can making sound, karakara sanshin. So that's what I refer to. And how, what's the difference between a sanshin and a shamisen? Shamisen, uh, Japanese is cat skin, and Okinawa is uh, uh, snake skin, and I think the sa uh, Okinawan uh, tuning has, I think, higher, yeah, higher pitch, and um, uh, Japanese use that uh, bachi that's almost shamoji shaped, like this. Okinawa used the uh, um, like a nail extension. Um, we call it uh, tsume. It's like a tsume extension. They used to have uh, carve it out of uh, ivory, but uh, I don't think you can have ivory now. So they um, ivory or uh, they would be using um, goat's horn. In fact, I have that, and I have the ivory one. That uh, yeah. So or now maybe the nicely <laughs> plastic mold might be there. But it's something that you put on your finger and you click it with that. And Japanese one is with that, this kind of shape, almost like shamoji shape. That, those are, yeah. And I think Japanese uh, shamisen is much longer and a little bigger. <laughs> uh, and then you were talking about how you were color your fingernails as girls. How did you do that? Yeah, we. Um, there's a blossom flower that uh, blossoms uh, around around now, almost obon time. So you know, obon season, um, uh, we would have like tsunahiki or so. So everybody wanna go and look best. So we would um, rub that, make it soft, and you put it on top of your fingers, and you leave it on like that. Or um, sometimes you uh, rub that and mix it with the uh, uh, shikwasa, a little uh, lime, and then, and then put it on your finger. So that way the color uh, stays longer, retains. So that's how we used to color. Uh, in fact, there's you know, even song about that. You use that to color your nail, but your parents' teaching is used to color your heart. That's the, um, yeah, um, they call it tinsagu no hana. <laughs> you know what's really amazing when I listen to you is the the war just happened, everything mm -hmm. is devastated, and yet people want to uh, create art mm -hmm. and, and perform, and, and where did people get this kind of energy? Um, well, because of war, they didn't have anything, no entertainment. I think, um, in fact, um, the people who were in this performing arts, they formed like a theatrical group. So they went from village to village, or they stayed in you know one area, and they showcased um, maybe so many times a, a night just to uh, entertain the uh, the village people, so that they would um, 
uh, forget their suffering. It's something to calm themselves. And, uh, um, you know, so it was, uh, it was on the part of these uh, performance artists that used that as um, um, to help people. So, I think, in fact, um, uh, the Majikina school that I'm studying, uh, studied under, that Majikina, the father, uh, Yuko Sensei, the headmaster, was one of those uh, people who had that theater. And of course, his uh, daughters were all in dancing. So, um, the family would be performing the whole theater, whole show. The dance plus the uh, kumiudui plays and you know, all those um, whole evenings entertainment. And um, um, when my grandfather uh, would take me to, uh, you know, we would walk about an hour, an hour and then go to, it's um, a Quonset building or even um, um, just a tent that they have. And people, uh, the tarp, those military tarps with the, there, and everybody just sat on the floor. And maybe stage was um, plywood just put together, and sometimes there's a hole all over the place. Or, um, yeah, p plywood party from the ruin of homes or something like that that was just put there. And, uh, and you just sat there and just enjoyed, because there's no, of course, no TV, no radio, and that was your, you know, home entertainment and uh, like obon season each village would put uh, their own uh, show where uh, young people would uh, do something special they work through whole year and then they have like asa uh, each village would have that and so there was yeah enough uh, village entertainment to um, entertain people at the beginning. In Okinawa, especially being in Tropic uh, Island, it's hot, so evening was uh, yeah cool, and that's when everybody would um, go and um, enjoy those 